Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. I have a really cool person with her friend today on the episode. I'm going to have her introduce herself and explain uh, what she does. So, I'm Jessica Lee. I'm a photographer that specializes in boudoir and conceptual art. Okay. Won't, and uh, Natasha is here. I met her at a bar <laughs> where her and her husband, um, she's here with us, but she doesn't have a mic. So she might speak up and you might barely hear her. I'll just put my boobs in her face. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> It'll be the first time. <laughs> so explain to people what boudoir and contemporary, or what do you say? What boudoir conceptual and conceptual. Portraits. Explain what that is. So um, boudoir is French for the word bedroom. So it's oh, okay. essentially anything that can happen in a woman's bedroom, in the boudoir. Um, in today's... Uh, I guess in today's vernacular, it would be kind of like Victoria's Secret style photos, lingerie mm-hmm. images, um, the 2020 version mm-hmm. of glamour shots. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of uh, boudoir. So it could be anything from um, just something a little bit sexy to full on nude. Yeah. If you wanted to. Uh, conceptual portraiture uh, is a broad term. It kind of goes over anything that you can dream up. So. All of my work tends to be a little sexy in some way, shape, yeah, or form. Of <laughs> so, um, from a series that I started last year that uh, centers around kind of like queens, oh, the idea cool. of queens, and um, I just finished up a couple of sessions that um, have really cool lighting, and she kind of looks like a warrior princess or whatnot. So it's really interesting, and it wouldn't necessarily be boudoir, but it's still sexy. Yeah, I just seen. Well, obviously, I had a look at some of your. Um portraits on instagram and they're really nice i really love some of the black and white ones because i like, add things for um the older like o- older styles like 1920s mm-hmm. stuff but mm-hmm. i like how you did what you did with the black and white mm-hmm. yeah i did a um i kind of wanted to do a black and white project not too long ago and took a friend of mine out and was i shot in black and white like the back of the camera looking at it black and white <laughs> like everything was was black and white and then when i looked at them in color because they come into the system in color mm-hmm. it was really weird was yeah like, Whoa. so how do you get into this um i into boudoir into photography as a whole well starting photography since that's kind of like the base and move on to boudoir (laughs) so when i was a teenager i read this book called where the heart is Mm -hmm. and then um watching the movie it's a natalie portman movie and you know i'm watching it and in i wasn't really sure she she became a photographer in the movie, like yeah. in the book. And I didn't really know what these cameras were. And when I saw her shopping through it on the movie and picked up the Raleigh Flex camera, mm-hmm. I was like, that's the coolest camera I've ever seen. And I kind <laughs> of got on this like journey into photography because of a book and movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's how it started. Um, boudoir photography for me kind of started when someone who I was an acquaintance with in high school took photos of me just for fun Yeah. because she, she did it as part of her photography business. Um, she was like, Oh yeah, I offer these, like these are becoming popular. I don't want to date myself, but (laughs) these are becoming popular is what she had said. And we were just hanging out one night and, you know, took some photos and was like, Oh, that'd be really fun. So then I ended up taking photos like that of friends and it kind of started to just grow. Just grow. Oh my god. So, one thing I want to talk about, um, because we are photography, one thing I'm, one thing I always like pondered about was kind of like how body image works. Like, Mm -hmm. like obviously when I look at the different pictures or photography portraits you did, um, you see women of different sizes, different Mm -hmm. colors. So, you know, all all around. Mm -hmm. Um, how how do you help with make them feel comfortable, especially for them being naked or being vulnerable? Well, I think whenever you shoot with me, I mean, obviously I can't speak for others, but whenever you shoot with me, it's just kind of like hanging out with, you know, one of your girlfriends. Mm-hmm. Um, and they say that when you go on like a movie set and they're doing the love scenes yeah. or whatnot, they're like, it's not really as sexy as it looks on camera. Yeah. <laughs> um, so a lot of times you'll see a girl who's, you know, <laughs> in, in a pose and is smiling or laughing and that's usually because we're having a conversation or maybe I've said something completely inappropriate and made them laugh and Mm -hmm. kind of like I want to make it feel like more like girls hanging out than to worry about things of course I can't think of 
any female that I've shot that didn't tell me something to avoid. Yeah. Like something that she didn't want shown or that she wasn't really comfortable with. Um, and that's just, that's kind of the nature of the beast. Mm -hmm. I'm critical of myself. We're all most critical of ourselves. Yeah. Um, but I just try to communicate a lot with anybody that's going to do a session and let them know that, you know, it's okay. You don't have to love every image, but let's kind of like try things. Let's maybe push it out of your comfort zone. Um, angles, shadows, that can hide a lot. So I try to make people a little bit more comfortable. And then I'll also show them what I'm getting on the back of the camera. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, look, like I know you were really uncomfortable in this pose and you didn't really know about it, but this is what I got. And then they're like, oh, that's awesome. And I'm like, yes, just me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, have you, uh, do you do any guys too? Or? I do. Yeah. I do male boudoir as well. What's that consist of? Um, in some ways, because obviously being a female, I see men through like the female lens. Mm. You know what I mean? So in a lot of ways, it doesn't. Guys don't have to do a whole lot to be sexy. Like I did. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I did. Um, one of my most popular, and granted, the the ones where they're have less on are also popular, but one of the most popular was just a gentleman in a pair of jeans and a t-shirt kind of laid across the bed and he's just laughing. So he looks like really happy. And there's uh, the same gentleman kind of like, you know, sitting on the couch, very comfortably on the couch, fully clothed, just laughing. And like everybody kind of like dies over there, that those images. And it's because it's, you know, a simple sexy. A lot of times women would like to see men in, you know, a good suit versus, <laughs> <laughs> versus, versus half naked. Our, our visual appeal is a little bit different than the male visual appeal, I guess. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not saying that you should only shoot with me in a tuxedo. tuxedo. We can start there. <laughs> we, we can start there. So, but you know, you don't have to be a Chippendale to mm -hmm. be sexy either. For, for men, so. Well, I remember in college, I took part of a, a stupid psychology study or experiment where me and this other guy, we were chosen because our professor's like, okay, you guys are decent looking guys. So the experiment was, we, we were the, the confederate or the, um, the control, well, not the control, but like the, the actor. Mm -hmm. And one day we're either wearing a uh, mechanic, um, overalls mm -hmm. or the next day we're wearing um the scrubs mm -hmm. so it was we we're put in a room with a woman act like we're um taking like a study or a quick test and we're supposed to hit on them and see how many times right um we're just testing for social status not so much looks and also they're at the same time writing about what they think of the ideal guy yeah. and like what's important looks we'll find out on their study or on their surveys like looks wasn't really important it was other factors mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Netflix has a special that's called 100 Humans, and they mm -hmm. do the same thing. Like, they dress the people up. One day, um, they give them, like, dating profiles. Yeah. And one day, like, this, you know, average Joe is a janitor, and th they get to go through kind of like a speed dating thing. Then the next day, the mm -hmm. same average Joe is a doctor, you know, and they yeah, get so, to go so, through the yeah. same, like, speed dating thing. And, of, you know, of course, the women found him more attractive when he was a doctor. <laughs> 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 yeah, so, you know, women have their own thing and men have their own thing, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what they want. I mean, I'm definitely not saying, like, um, I don't know if it's cool to, like, rep yeah, um, no, what you want. <laughs> other things. But, like, if you follow the Inked Boys on Instagram, I mean, What's that's that? a nice account. It is um, a lot of scantily clad Tashing gentlemen who the, are the tattooed. tattooed. Okay, that makes sense. And spend a good bit of time at the gym. Oh, okay. <laughs> mine's Virilis. Virilis? Yes. The one with the kilt that yeah. for the wedding. The yeah, the kilt. kilt. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> so what, before we're talking, I asked you guys about interesting stories, like, from a couple of shoots, and you you guys brought up a couple of ones. I told you, I told you to stop so we could talk about it. <laughs> um... So obviously going back to like the body image mm -hmm. issues with that being, with that coming up at, uh, at almost every shoot, probably 90% of the sessions that I do ask about liquid courage. Okay. <laughs> and I now have a policy that you may have two drinks. That's it. That is it. What happened? 
So I had two ladies um, show up to uh, a boot. I was running a special and Mm -hmm. they were um, referrals from another source. And I had two ladies show up and they had already had a a bit to drink and they brought a bottle of wine each with them. Mm -hmm. And you know that, you know, like, like drunk face. You know how you kind of like get it? Oh, yeah. It's like more loose. Yeah, it's kind of like loose and you just kind of look haggard yourself. Um, That happened a bit. And then there was a lot of stumbling and inability to hold (laughs) poses and um, belligerent remarks and things. And I I ended up kicking them both out. (laughs) Oh. What was the last? What was the last? straw um or the line that was crossed the uh, the last straw was when they they were so i guess they were so in a place where they could not um work through the image like the the body images that they, that, that, that they had mm-hmm. that they were like stuck i mean no matter what i said probably a little bit alcohol induced but no matter what I said, it was, oh, but, you know, oh, but this and oh, but this. And every time they would get into a pose, no matter what it was that I said, she, you know, she would do the exact opposite of anything that I was telling her to do. Things that would help her out. OK, yeah. well, make sure that you arch your back this way or put your hand here or, you know, don't worry about covering that up. It's it, a lot of times when you like Photoshop stuff, it's easier to Photoshop it if it's kind of like wide out in the open. So if you're Photoshopping skin, like mm-hmm. a scar on someone's skin, um, which was one of her concerns, it's easier if you cover it up, then I've got the shadow of your fingers and your fingers in the way and like all this other kind of stuff to be able to, you want to grab skin from another area while you're Photoshopping. Yeah. And if you just like leave it open, then it's easier for me to do it. And she just wouldn't absolutely wouldn't and then when it was her friend's turn to go there was just so much like back and forth and oh that looks dumb and oh you you know calling each other names as women sometimes do jokingly and the other girl started to cry so I was like okay well oh my god (laughs) all right so this just isn't going to work I'm very sorry I'm the the sessions were extended time and it was it was just it was a nightmare thus it is saved in my backup files as disaster boudoir disaster, disaster. Oh, what was the other one because I know it was um oh lord was let's there, talk about stories is there another one is there anything that you want to tell about a particular boudoir shoot oh <laughs> what happened <laughs> um well, I I don't like to be in situations like with uh with I mean I'm a female yeah. so I don't like to be in situations with men and and these two men in particular into like jujitsu and all that other kind of stuff okay. so men who are very much stronger than me um alone yeah so I had, that's why Natasha's here <laughs> yeah so I had people um with me for you know for the dude war shoot and it was um it it was. It got, it got interesting. It got interesting. So what happened? There was, um, as, I mean, we're all adults. Yeah. So as we're, you know, going through the shoot, there was a jujitsu demonstration. Okay. I didn't know I was quite flexible in that way. Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, you remember the Adam Levine shot where uh, his girlfriend, he's like tattooed, you know, he's got yeah, tattoos all over. Yeah. And his girlfriend, like, has an arm between his legs covering up his stuff. And then the other arm, like... Yeah, the black and white. Was it black and white? I think it's a black and white. Something like that. So, it was like, hey, while we're here, why don't don't we attempt that? So, that was attempted, um, too, also. So, you know, it's just... Fun things happen. Sometimes. I'm kind of... What what fun things happen? Because I'm kind of, like, lost. No, that's what she... Okay, 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 she got the perk. Okay, yeah. She can't really handle an attractive male subject right okay. you, you kind of like get in th- they were in really good shape like really good shape so you know as as somebody who i don't do any of this stuff so it's somebody who like gets pretzeled on the floor by a very attractive guy who is in very good shape it's just kind of like okay and i have to work now um <laughs> perks and, like, perks is a job and then you know my friend got to feel up a really hot guy so you know doing the adam <laughs> levine kind of thing so i mean you know Perks of the job. I was not the friend that manhandled. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Do you have any um, 
Any favorite suits that stand out, like something like you're like really proud of? Oh goodness, 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 goodness. Oh, she's got to say me since I'm sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> um, Natasha's shoot actually is one that I'm very proud of because. I want you to describe her since. Because well, so I send people through um, a series of prep for mm-hmm. their session. So we start with like conversations and planning, and I give you homework. You make a pin board like. I want you to come in feeling empowered from the get-go. And I feel like to date, Natasha is the only one that did all of her homework. Like, <laughs> really? Oh, what, I didn't know what, this. What, what, yes. home, what homework do you give? Um, so we, like I said, we start with a consultation. We determine the, the idea, the theme, you know, and what, what we want. I help you narrow down your outfits. Like I help people every step of the way. So homework that I give is um, to get people to start practicing posing Mm -hmm. in the mirror, take selfies, walk in your heels because a lot of people don't like do that. Um, So make sure that you're really comfortable in your stuff. I challenge people to wear their lingerie under their regular clothes to run errands. (laughs) Um, You you feel different when you know there's something else on underneath Mm -hmm. you feel different when you're out and about there's a different confidence level it's like the women in high heels where you know it 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 makes your legs look better and it just kind of gives you better posture and it helps you overall same thing you wear your heels out in public and you wear like a bustier or something really sexy underneath yeah surprise some people like ooh. yeah (laughs) it's 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 good stuff so that's kind of um that's the biggest part of their homework is the pose practice and you know to kind of challenge themselves and there was playlists yeah to make a playlist skincare all kinds of stuff yeah there was actually quite a bit of yeah 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 so we go over um a couple of the makeup artists that i work with will give a skincare and hair care regimen so that depending on what hairstyle you want it takes better and so that your makeup looks better and looks better and stuff like that um so we give them those things so that they know exactly what they're doing too but i think what a lot of that does and i don't know if this is picking me up or not i think what a lot of that does Um, in addition to just prepping better for the shoot itself is being diligent about your self-care just makes you feel better in general. So then you go into the day feeling fresh, feeling hydrated, feeling like you look good. And I think that helps turn out a better product as well. So going back to her, her shoot, describe Mm -hmm. what happened. Um, so first of all, we found the perfect location. Mm -hmm. Like it was absolutely perfect. And sometimes that's hard to do, you know, unless you're willing to travel across the country, you know, because sometimes when you, if you, sometimes what you want just isn't available locally. Mm -hmm. Um, we can get close, but we can't get like it. Um, we got it for Natasha's session. It was, I, I, I think it, I think you found it. And I was like, uh, yeah, I'll book it like right now. We're going to get, we're going to get in there. We're going to do this. Um, so the location was perfect. Um, we had had enough communication beforehand so that her outfit selection was perfect. Um, she had her playlist done. So, and it was all stuff that kind of kept her in a really good headspace. So it was all music that made her feel sexy, that would put her in the mood or make her feel empowered. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that just really, you know, played throughout. And she was just, when different songs would come on, she was like, oh, yes. And she would just kind of <laughs> get into it. And and that's what you want. Like, for me, that's usually the best. I'm, I'm a very in-the-moment kind of person when I work. Um, so I get inspired. When I see people having a really good time, I'm like, yes. And we're e- it's easier to kind of, like, roll with it and get more interesting stuff than like a planned shot list like oh, okay well now we're gonna do this pose or that pose and it's just easier it's a better flow for me uh-huh. and we end up getting more creative stuff so good so um i'm sorry i had like a little brain fart but what would what would be your ideal like shoot like what was something that you really want to do huh Let's see well, a lot of the things that I really want to do kind of end up in the nude realm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a few years ago, I had this inspiration that I was I was inspired by. Uh, do you ever watch any of the James Bond movies? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Which so one? You, uh, almost any of them. So okay. you know how the opening of almost every James Bond movie is 
usually a naked woman uh-huh. walking around in heels, and she, it's just her silhouette. She's yeah, just her the, um, this, the opening credits. Yes. Yeah, so the opening before, you know, like the gunshot, mm, yeah. like, you know, all this stuff. Um, I have always loved those. Like, always. They're, they're just awesome to me. Um, I like silhouettes in general. Um, I think the female form is beautiful in general. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had this art project that I started that took the female form, essentially, and mixed it with nature to make, like, these art silhouette shots. Um, it's kind of like a double exposure, and, you know, I'm, I'm a... I'm a technical person, so if I can do it in camera, that makes me really jazzed up. Like, (laughs) I don't get jazzed over Photoshop work, but if I get it in camera through lighting and technique and whatever else, it makes my geeky heart really happy. Yeah. Um, So I did all of this work in camera. So Mm -hmm. I shot these girls before on, like, a white background, kind of in their silhouettes. and, And when you do a double exposure... Anything that's white is you can't record secondary information so, onto it. Not just, what's a double exposure? Yeah, so it was we it's usually a film technique mm-hmm. that you have you take two pictures on top of each other. So when you take one picture, any dark areas that are left on that photo, mm-hmm. you can expose something else into those dark areas. Okay. So I put them on a white backdrop because the white's not going to expose anything other than them. So I got just their silhouette, just their body. And then I could take pictures out in nature. Um, I did some in New York, D.C., uh, the Caribbean. Like, I took these everywhere with me (laughs) to, like, you know, put these girls in, like, different situations and have kind of, like, palm trees and stuff like that going. Um, And those really made made me happy. Um, Whenever I think of, like, art series that are self-fulfilling it's always nude (laughs) they're always nudes (laughs) be like yeah let's just go and then lay in a river naked cool cool (laughs) yeah Yeah. so some people are in the back like at the park like wait what are you guys doing like yeah (laughs) it's art go really early in the morning to some to some of the places to get privacy yeah so someone let's say someone's interested in doing becoming a boudoir photographer like what would you suggest like equipment wise or training wise for them um i think i mean i'm completely self-taught so i don't i mean there's tons of um, resources out there for people that are self-taught um you know google anything that you want to know and you're going to find a youtube video on it uh there's a lot of boudoir photographers that I think have like YouTube channels and stuff like that. Um, but if they were interested in doing it, I, I mean, I started with like friends, like my neighbor was one of the first pers- people that I took mm-hmm. pictures of. It was just kind of like, Hey, you know, I'm thinking about this. Um, I will say that equipment wise, it's really helpful to have equipment that performs well in low light. Yeah. And it's very helpful to have a lens, um, that is a bit wider of a lens uh, at least for me, that's kind of like what I've found. I know mm-hmm. some people shoot with like an 85 or plus that get really tight shots, you know, so you just kind of like have a hand by underwear and <laughs> and those are sexy, but mine focus mainly on the whole person. Like yeah. mine usually have a face in them and stuff like that versus just the pieces and parts. I actually have to remind myself to get just why well, I call them the pieces and parts, like just a boob shot or just a butt <laughs> shot or, you know, whatnot, because they look good in albums. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you have like all these little vignettes of body parts covered in place and then, you know, the whole human <laughs> shot. So I think having something that is going to perform well in low light is uh, is probably imperative when you're com- when you're doing boudoir photography. Um, and again, it depends on style. Yeah. Because my style is more... I would say it's it, it's a little romantic and risque um, as far as the images go. There are people out there that shoot more like Playboy style yeah. where everything is, you know, a lot of my images, the face is in focus and then mm-hmm. the body is all, you know, like blurry. Yeah. Because ladies, you know, if you're a size two, it's one thing, but I don't <laughs> photograph a lot of size two women. <laughs> so, um you know, the, the, the girls out on the beach where, like, every single inch is in focus and then the skin is, you know, like, perfect. And there are people out there that do that. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not one of them. But I would, for, if you wanted to do something like what I do, those are the things that you would need. Do you ever do Photoshop or? So I fix things here and there. Mm-hmm. But I really like for people to look like 
who they are Mm -hmm. in their images. Um, If there's something that's kind of like glaring or I know that it's like an angle thing, you know, like when you put your arm down and you get that little bit of chub, right, that comes out of your bra. A lot of times I'm just like, (laughs) (laughs) just like nudge that right back in there and be like, nobody likes that. We're just going (laughs) to, we're just going to fix that up. So um, what's your take also on like, because one thing I'm starting to notice too, because I'm starting to play more with Instagram, it's kind of like Instagram models. Mm-hmm. And one thing I did when I used to work at the town center here here in Jacksonville, one thing I noticed a lot too, and like it was, I I, I started getting annoyed by like just women just taking pictures of themselves by mm-hmm. or with their friends, and they take like 20, 30 shots, mm-hmm. and it's like I don't like I don't think that's photography. I think that's just like narcissism or something like <laughs> I, like really this is narcissism man when i look at some of these instagram i i don't follow any of them as much while they pop up mm-hmm. when i look at some of them it's like like it's not I don't, it could be considered art but i don't think it is because like it's all about them um i mean so my take on instagram models as a whole is good for them Mm -hmm. if you can remember to post to instagram and like you've figured out the algorithm and you've figured out a way that is going to make you money get you the success that you want and it makes you happy good for you please god tell me your secrets Mm because i have not yet mastered instagram Mm -hmm. um i you know it's great when it comes to phone cameras or cameras in general that people will just go and pick up, yeah. they're getting so good these days that there's a lot of talk of our photographers. Is it still a business? Is this still going to be a thing? Is this, you know, mm-hmm. is our industry doomed? You know, that kind of stuff yeah. absolutely comes up. And I feel like maybe, like maybe it's doomed for certain types of photographers, Mm -hmm. like the ones that only rely on natural light and can't do studio work or that, you know, kind of fall into masses of people, you know, just like, Oh, their work looks exactly the same. But I think if you, um, if you do you and there's something specific that you offer that other people can't, there's not going to be an app or a cell phone or anything like that that can replace it. And as long as you're talking to the people who are in in your lane of what it is that you want to do mm-hmm. and you're mastering what it is that you want to do, that there will there will always be a need. Yeah, because uh, one thing when you said that, like about technology kind of like taking away certain jobs, like the, my, the way I look is like you. Yeah, anyone could take like a selfie or you mm-hmm. get your boyfriend, girlfriend and take it. You know, take a picture of you with the sun setting on the beach. Mm-hmm. But it's like, no, you need a, someone with the eye. Mm-hmm. Like, who knows? Like, oh, no, no, no. Let's move a little bit this way. Or, no, we're going to wait at this time. Or we're going to dress mm-hmm. up like in these colors. Yeah. Like, so there's more of what I think of, like, it is art. And you need, and there's, a, like, a wisdom or experience that you need to have with it that technology can. Yeah. Technology could make it readily available, mm-hmm. make it easier. But you need that experience and wisdom yeah i mean absolutely um and like you when you're a photographer and especially a uh, professional photographer you have to like you have to love light because that's what that's what photography is from its inception back in the film days Mm -hmm. to now it is a sensor within a box that collects light data yeah that's it (laughs) <laughs> that's all, that's it. That's all it is. at the core so you have to if you know how to bend it structure it color it like all that kind of stuff it all comes down to lighting like every single bit of it comes down to learning and loving light um i mean people it, you know you can you can do great things with your cell phone i don't carry around a small camera with me when i go places i just put everything on my cell phone yeah then again i won't buy a cell phone that doesn't have pro mode because it drives me crazy what's that <laughs> So the professional, like it has a pro mode inside oh, okay, the, okay. <laughs> inside your phone. Cause like I'll, I'll go absolutely nuts if I can't control something <laughs> like, no, I know you will do this. <laughs> so, um, no, I think it's, I think there's a difference between, you know, being an, an Instagram model with a bunch of selfies and then a working model who has to, you know, it's actually a job. Yeah, where it's actually a job. And I think a lot of these girls want to, 
you know, they want to get there to where mm. it's actually a job. But like, y'all need to watch more America's Next Top Model. Like, I don't, I'm, I'm oh. so sad that that show is not on the air anymore because it was, you know, it really showed that it's work. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's, you know, it's hard. You've got to, you know, hold your body in a certain position and hold your face in a certain position and know what angle somebody's at and be able to sell a product and, 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 you know, it's this, not just. It's layered. Yeah. It's not just a glass of wine outside of a <laughs> bistro somewhere in St. Augustine, you know. Oh. And I think to your point about the photographer needing to know light and that it's working with light and knowing how to manipulate that. I think as a model, as a true professional model, it's also knowing light. It's knowing your body and how to move it, but also recognizing what the light source is and how that's going to impact and create shape. Yeah. So when I work with any professional models or people who have modeling experience, I I straight up tell them, this is your main light. I have a kick light here. I, I use very technical terms. And the ones who are pros are like, okay. And instantly they get into what they need to, they get into what they need to do. Be like, okay, I'm shooting with a wide angle. We're going for this. This is your main light. Here's your, you know, this is just backlight or here's what we're trying to sell. And they're, (laughs) they're able to get into it. Whereas when you sometimes bring people in who have just been posing for their cell phones, you still have to coax them like you would a client. Because that's the difference. I don't tell clients that. I don't look, I mean, I might tell you this is your main light so that you understand do not turn away from this large source here. <laughs> Don't turn your head. I need you to look this way. You know, I'll tell them, oh, the window's your main light. So everything you do, make sure you're opened up to the window. But when I, yeah, when it comes to a model, <laughs> if I'm like for creative shoots or, you know, things that I'm like, oh, I need a model for this. And especially if I'm going to have to like pay them because models get paid. Yeah. <laughs> then, you know, I just, I give them direction and I expect them to work. I don't, I don't expect to have to work. Like I'm studying, I'm taking the pictures. You're doing, the you're diff- working you're doing a different, different job. Yeah. You're doing your We're doing job. a different job. Yeah. When I work with a client, then we go from start to finish. I, you know, pose you and work with you kind of like the whole way. So when I'm doing something that's creatively fulfilling, I don't want to work mm-hmm. like that. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I... <laughs> One thing I was thinking about, say like I may, I'll show you a picture later because I have, because I'm trying to sell my, well, I've been selling my book. I actually been getting successful by like, doing it on my own. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking about doing it full time now since I'm laid off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, laid off on Monday, so. Oh, crap, yeah. Nah, it's, it's I can like, tell you, every time I've been fired or yeah. laid off or something like that, including the most recent one, it's been the best thing to yeah, happen to me. It because, really well, my, kicks my, me in the butt. Well, my thing was like, I, I'll tell you a quick story because so on Sun I, I like I wasn't I was working for Tesla so I was getting I was like pre- pretty good pay I knew this was going to happen but I was hoping it was in September where we could get the stocks we're we were going to get stocks vested mm-hmm. and those stocks are pretty high right now so I was hoping that would happen but I knew that the, the company's really shady so but Sunday night. I um I have a friend that I work with and he works in the service department. His house got there was damage of war damage from a fridge, and that happened over time. So I think there was mold or something. So they had removed his whole cabinets, part of the bedroom, stuff like that. The, the fridge, get rid of that, and insurance won't cover ten thousand dollars of it. So like he did go fund me. I you know, on Sunday I, I put some money on it. Then I went to go share it through the group text message for work for sales, and nobody replied and nobody donated because you go look on the GoFundMe and see who, who donated it. And I, did, I just remember thinking Sunday night because I used to be a cop. And I remember and I was talking to my neighbor who, who's a she's a paramedic and I went to go visit my friend in Savannah. He we were cops together and he's in the military. About the idea like, um, we used to take care of each other. Like, even if you didn't like the person, like, something like that would happen, you always donated something, like, $5, $10 just to help out. Anything helped. And when I saw that nobody did that on Sunday, it's like, do I really want to work for people like this? Like, work with people that I go, spend you spend large times with, but they don't really care. Then the next thing, when I got laid off, <laughs> I was like, oh, actually, I feel pretty good about it. <laughs> like... <laughs> I, ra- I like I, it's not like 
I wasn't heartbroken. I was more pissed off than like the, like the timing of it because I knew it was gonna happen. It's more like wait one more month. Mm-hmm. That's it. I really don't care about the, this company or really these people anymore. It's just one more month. I went through it in September, a mm-hmm. month before our wedding. And yeah, it was absolutely the best thing that could have happened because I didn't realize the amount of stress. I'm sorry, I feel like we were getting all of your face no. and stuff. I didn't we're realize trying, the amount I'm sorry. of pressure. I'm leaning over to Natasha because <laughs> she doesn't have a mic and I have a lapel mic. So. <laughs> I didn't realize we we're getting this cozy today. But, but yeah, it is it is always a blessing in disguise. And, and it's it was absolutely the best thing that could have happened for me. Well, like... um. I'm sorry, make this a little bit about me, but then we'll go back to you. <laughs> no, like, it's your podcast. Well, like I've been <laughs> I've been selling my books at the art markets, and and even before the COVID stuff, I was selling my bars at or not my the books at two bars, Grape and Grain Volstead on Friday nights. I did a promotion like if you buy a book, you get a free shot, and that was working. So for a while, like I actually started making this in a small business. I did a website, like I start I did registered with IRS. I haven't collected taxes yet for Florida, but I'm going to have to start doing it now. But now I'm thinking, like, I got the time. I got some money in my savings. I guess a, so, a decent severance package. So I'm like, mm-hmm. maybe this is the time no, to do it. No, like the present. It's like, I got the free time now. Mm-hmm. Do it. But anyway. Uh, I can tell you that now that things have kind of opened back up, um, I'm being very transparent about um, my safety precautions and things like that, since those are the times oh, okay, that we yeah, live in. Yeah. So I'm being very transparent about those things. You said safety, I forgot. Oh, wait, since, we're still doing COVID. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm still in. laughs> since, um, since opening back up and people spending, I guess, because of people spending so much time in quarantine and, you know, uh, alone and maybe in their PJs eating bonbons and potato chips my case, it was the potato chips. I can go through a bag of Lay's in like a day. Um, I've announced boudoir sessions coming up. Anything from swimsuit edition kind of beach sessions. Uh, I'm doing some pool sessions. Ooh, and then cool. in a couple of months, I'm doing pin-up sessions. Like oh, I love... straight up did, did hardcore see, pin-up. Well, did you see the, my portraits on the wall when you yeah. walked in? Yeah, cause I love pin-up. Yeah. Like those, I, I always thought those were the most beautiful yes. type of pictures. So people have been, um, things have gone really well. Yeah. Like people are very interested in them. And I think I just, you know, I, I, I finally feel like I, I, I did it right. I announced it at the right time. I like, I like did the prep work for it in the right way. And like, you know, there, one of my sessions sold out like in 48 hours. I was like, Oh, Sweet. What session was that one? The pool sessions. That's gonna be cool. That's gonna be cool. I'll be able cool. to like get in the pool and you know whatnot, and and they sold out like the whole weekend. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to I have to close them because I have to sleep at some point. Like, <laughs> I, I, I was think, I was thinking that as we we're talking through this episode, like since I'm like considering doing the, the full time for the book, like I may ask you like, hey, can you like do a nice picture of me? Yeah. And I'll show you my display, so I think you'll get a good idea of what I want. Yeah. But um. Branding. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm a, I'm kind of a true Gemini. I've got, I have two Gemini. brands. It's, <laughs> it's, it's true. It's um, I have two brands. I have my, of course, my name, and then I have the Breaking Tradition brand, which is where I do all of the conceptual and boudoir yeah. art. So, you know. Oh, so you go yeah. between both. Like, yeah. Which is good. Like, so you're adaptable. Like, okay, well, this week I could do the professional stuff. Yeah. For work, like for work portrait and stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So, and the, you know, the, the pandemic has completely changed like the wedding industry. So I'm like, eh, well, let's do personal branding shots. Well, my thing, eh. my thing is like, I think that was for the best. Cause I honestly, like, I think, uh, some of this pandemic stuff might, it's bad. Like anyone losing their job, I think it's going to transform certain industries that need mm-hmm. to be transformed. Yeah. Cause one, cause I briefly did wedding planning in my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> briefly. I failed miserably at it, but I realized like, man, why is this? This is too much money for a day. For a day. Like, people are going in debt, like, $30,000, $40,000 mm-hmm. for a there's, wedding. There's wedding loans Yeah, I'm like, yeah. like, no, like, let's get yourself a nice dress, a nice suit, and just spend money. You could spend probably two, $3,000 on a nice party. Mm-hmm. It's, so, it's like, just do that. <laughs> just have, yeah. like, a nice party. Our wedding was rad. Yeah. <laughs> Our wedding was totally rad. It was. She was the biggest expense. Yes. <laughs> she was the biggest That's expense. right. Totally worth it. Yes. Yes. I mean, obviously, being a photographer, I feel like he, he, photos are some of the things that, like, last 
a while, and I'm sure Natasha is sick of hearing me mention this, but I watched this like Betty Page memoir thing. Yeah. <laughs> and the amount of like videos and photos that are out there from <laughs> the like thir- you know, like the 40s and 50s and stuff like that, and, and of her is just amazing. Oh wait, like um, it's amazing. I have a Betty Page lie today. No, I have it for the past couple yes. of years. <laughs> so it's just like you know, without having without having that we wouldn't be able to emulate this style and and have that knowledge of the past without having the images to go along with yeah. it. So I'm super big into creating kind of like timeless images or something that is going to be like, when I post my conceptual shoots, I want it to be like something that stops you in your tracks while you're scrolling through Instagram. Mm-hmm. Like I look at it and you're like, holy shit, what is that? You know, or like, who is that? Or like, you know, you know, have some sort of a reaction to it. Um, and I feel like those are the kind of things that, you know, that last. I feel like hopefully, you know, when Natasha or any of these other ladies, whether they do boudoir or whether they do like one of my series where Queen or, you know, something like that, later on down the line, they're showing their friends or their family or their children or whomever, look at this really cool thing that I did, you know, a few years ago or when I was younger mm-hmm. or, you know, whatnot. That's how this whole thing happened. Because we met in a bar and I had to show him my yeah. apps on my phone. Yeah. You're like, oh, look. No, because we were talking about, like, I forgot we were talking about the podcast stuff. Up. And I'm like, you know, you brought that up. I'm like, yeah, I wanted to talk for a while. I wanted to, I haven't done an episode in a while, but also I wanted to do someone that did boudoir photos because I wanted to kind of like talk about that. Yeah. So it's like, oh, you got like, lucky. Oh, here, look at my butt. <laughs> I know. But, but to, you know, back to the, the initial, one of the initial questions about um, body image mm-hmm. is I, I went in having huge body. I mean, I, I, it took me 10 years to work up the guts to do this. This is mm-hmm. how long we had been talking about doing this. And then finally, last July or August, I was like, okay, yeah, we're doing it. And we set a date and we booked it. And then we worked together on it. And the first preview shot that she sent me, and and mind you, I had a ton of fun doing it. had so much fun. We had a great day. And and it was just, that's what we did in place of a bachelorette party for me. (laughs) And I think it was the next night, maybe two nights later, you sent me the first preview shot and it was the laying back on the bed and I was floored and I like nearly dropped my phone and showed my husband and I was like, holy crap, that's me. And this was unedited. This wasn't retouched. This was just, that's the art that she creates. And so the impact that that has on your body image, but also just in seeing yourself the way other people see you. And, mm. um, it has a huge positive impact. Yeah. Um, someone once told me like everyone has some type of body dysmorphia. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like everyone ha- doesn't see, everyone doesn't, see, you don't see yourself how other people see you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, what was that show? Tim Gunn and Heidi Klum. The uh, oh gosh, yeah. Oh, um, the original one. I know, and I. <clears throat> Project Runway. Yes. So mm. back when Project Runway was kind of just starting out, and yeah. then everyone was falling in love with Tim Gunn, they did a spinoff show that was just him, or mm-hmm. some like a little spinoff series or something like that, and it took like everyday women, um, and he would take. I remember this like one segment that he would do. He would take belts that had been, you know, notched in different ways. So it just looked like a circle on Mm -hmm. the wall. And he would say, which one do you think is you? Basically like your circumference. Like which one do you think is your size? Oh, wow. every single time women pointed to one that was way larger than what they were. Oh, wow. And then he's like, he's like, no, this one's actually you. And they'd be like, are you serious? And he's like, yeah. Like he would take it off the wall and put it around them. And then of course it would Oh my fit. God, that's so and, like, cool. I've got chills like cool talking thing. about it. I've, I've kind of, I like, I saw that like a long time ago and I've kind of always wanted, I've had this dream of like hosting an event where I do the same thing. I just have all these ones on the wall. You and I'm should, like, which like, one do you think is you? No, and like, now shut up and do pictures. <laughs> that would be cool. Like, just like a little idea. Cause I go to the Riverside Art Market and sell the book. Um... You could do like a small like little display like that, where you ha- put like get like a makeshift wall, put it on there, mm-hmm. and like which one did you? Then also you could do like some photography right Social there, some quick ones. Yeah. yeah. Like okay, I'll do ten dollars yeah. for like a quick really like little fun. suit. Because I can, I mean, I, 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 you know, I sew a little bit too, so mm-hmm. I can always like bring my measuring tape and actually take their measurements, so I know which one to point them to. <laughs> like, okay, so we got your measurements. Which one do you think? 
which circle on That's the wall. That's pretty cool. I yeah, like that. Yeah, it was that. really cool. I liked it a lot. All right, so we're going to, because me and you have to go soon, I'm going to go ahead and go to our uh, question phase of the podcast. Okay. For anyone that's new listening, um, actually for anyone that's a returning listener, I thank you. Anyone that's new, uh, I ask these questions at the last half of the interviews. Um, the reason for these questions are, well, these questions are actually interpersonal questions. They're psychological questions, it's supposed to show a different side of the person. They're fun and some of them are serious. But also the reason why I do this is because I interview different people from different walks of life. And a lot of people today are just quick to cancel people out, quick to not listen to, not to, quick not to hear the other person's story. So the whole goal with one of this podcast is like no matter what you think about this person, you can still relate to them. So the first question is, Given the choice of anyone in the world from any time period, who would you want as a dinner guest and why? Do they have to be famous? It could be anyone. What's anyone? Uh, uh, my great-grandmother. Why? Because, um, well, number one, she taught me the little song, If There's a Skeeter on My Peter, Knock It Off. Yes, <laughs> a Skeeter um, on My Peter, Knock It Off. <laughs> <laughs> Whack! Yes! Uh, yes. <laughs> Never heard that. Never heard that as a kid. <laughs> um... She passed when I was 14 or 15 years old, and now being an adult and just knowing what a spitfire she was, I would love, I have so many questions. Mm -hmm. Like, I have so many questions. (laughs) You know, number one, to know if, like, this is where I get it from. Um, And then just, you know, life advice and stuff like that. That would, I mean, that would definitely be somebody that I would want to have dinner with as an adult (laughs) now, since I lost her pretty early. It's nice, though. What would constitute a perfect day for you? Oh, my God. Um, no judgment. Mm-hmm. It's going to involve Disney. <laughs> like, <laughs> like the, the last two adults I talked to was like, yeah, we went to Disney by ourselves. Like, what? <laughs> okay. So now I'm not saying that it has to be like Disney World or whatever else, but like it would it would more than likely involve Disney. And here is why. Mm-hmm. The moment you step onto Disney property, you they, they call it on stage. You step into a show. Okay. You step into what they strive to present as perfection from walking down Main Street USA where you have uh, sights and smells mm-hmm. and everything else. Yeah. It's a complete, the smell thing is true. It's yes. a real thing. It's a completely designed experience. Mm-hmm. So if I want something to go perfect in my life and have a perfect day, I'm going to go to the people who have done perfect, perfect. Well, I used to work for Disney, like the cruise lines. I actually got to go... So... If you, get, if you get hired by Disney, you go to one of the parks to yeah, actually yeah. do the training. Mm-hmm. So we went to, they took us to Magic Kingdom and they took us to the back lot. Mm-hmm. So that's really cool. And like, they took us to one part, one alley. It was just like a cool alley, mm-hmm. but this is where people, or the I've workers. I've so many Disney yeah. weddings, I've probably been in this alley. <laughs> um, but I remember like the, like the detail, like how well detailed it was. Like, yeah. Upstairs, there was a ballet, ballet studio. Mm-hmm. The windows open, so you see the curtains move, and boy, you could hear tapping, mm-hmm. or you could hear dancing. Yeah. And then, like, there was, like, a bakery, and it's like, and the, our tour guide for the new employees, like, okay, take a moment and smell it. They you think You can smell cookies, through. right? Yeah. They think it through. And, like, I take, I mean, I, I do a lot, I try to, I try to think things through in that level of detail for, like, shoots that I create and design. Mm-hmm. Like, because... I feel like they're one of the best run companies that we have, in, you know, as an example, one of the best run companies. And that's how I would like to, that's the kind of experience that I want to give people. Yeah. So like if I had a perfect day, it's what? Kinda, I don't know I, if it would be on the ship. I mean, I've done so many Disney cruise weddings. Um, you know, it's, it's wonderful. I love them. <laughs> um, and I will say that when you are on the ship, they, they go above and beyond and yeah. maybe a few more steps past beyond to make sure that your experience is That's one thing you do. You do get your money's worth with Disney. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a, it, well, I did... It's lovely. For the... Well, going back to being a little selfish, for the book selling stuff, this weekend, like, I was thinking about it last week. Well, Disney. I was literally thinking about Disney. I'm like, I couldn't... And you said it properly because I couldn't think about the term you said on stage. Mm-hmm. But my thing was, like, putting the people in a different perspective. Put, I couldn't think of the right words for it or particularly appropriate. But I decided when I was selling, I'll show you the display later so you can see what I mean. I decided to uh, dress up a little bit. Mm-hmm. So only I did was wear, 
I was thinking about like the old blues travelers or the old 20s era people going around the country. They were just wearing a dress shirt, loose and tie, fedora. So that's why I did. Like I just rolled up sleeves, dress shirt, nice jeans, tie, way band suits. I look like 80s or blues travelers. And I actually I saw an increase in sales, mm -hmm. like a significant increase. I'm like, okay, so the Disney thing does work. They were right about that. Like, okay. Putting on a little show will actually help increase sales. Perception going, is everything. Yeah. And going back to you needing uh, photographs eventually, you were beginning to build your brand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but I'll show you, I'll show you guys yeah. that later. We'll go back to you now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, right, this is the this this question is a a strong question. Do you have a secret hunch on the way you will die? A secret haunt? Hunch. I'm sorry, hunch. 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 <laughs> hunch. No, I don't think so. Uh, no, I have absolutely no idea, no inkling <laughs> of how it will go. It's like, oh, no, I, I'm living. I hope it. I hope it's quick, or like I was, I had just had like a really good something, like a great night, or a great meal, or a great something, and then <laughs> surprise. <laughs> Feeling I know where her brain went and yes, why she's giggling. Why? I'm all right. If I I would love to die of a heart attack after sex. Like that totally. would be great. That's exactly what I'm saying. You have exactly like a ridiculously good <laughs> orgasm and then you just keel over. Ooh. This is perfect. It's not like getting like it better. It's not like getting better. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Totally agree. Okay. Although it'd be really traumatic for the other party. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. That's, what what <laughs> That's not my problem. <laughs> There's therapy for that. <laughs> If you could change anything about the way you were raised, what would it be? Um, oh, that's actually something I wrestled with like a lot of my life. I was uh, raised in a my parents split when I was 16 months old, so I've Ooh, like I've yeah. never known what it's like to have parental units that a get along, b live together. Um, and I wrestled with what could have changed through you know like childhood for a lot. I mean, a lot of my adulthood, I would say within the last probably three to five years is when I actually started kind of like making peace with that and realizing that there's no aspect of the person that I am today that I would like to change. And if I changed anything in the past, I'd be different. So there's nothing that I would wish had happened differently other than maybe that we had some money. Like that oh, would, yeah, that would have been that would have been all right. But yes. You know. It's tough growing up, growing up, like, worrying about money and food. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe they had, like, some moolah. <laughs> that, that would have been good. But it would still change. It would still it change. Would change. your appreciation level today. Yes, it would change the appreciation level today. So, I mean, there's really nothing, because even, like, even at our brokest and craziest, my mom did her level best to make sure that we had everything that we needed and that we had really good, like, you know, experiences. Yes, they were, like, there was bullshit and dark times and all that kind of stuff. But my mom would turn on, you know, like Madonna and we'd have like dance parties in the living room, <laughs> you know, like, so no, mm. and those are all fond memories to like look back on now. So there's something that I would change. All right. If you wake up tomorrow and gain any power ability, what would it be and why? God, I go through this like daily wondering what my superpower should be. Um... You should really give like lists when you ask these questions. No, I don't want to because I want like, I want to be surprised. Think. Like so that way it's organic when. Think. Um, let's see what superpower would I want. I don't know. I'd probably I would probably choose like the ability to teleport. Because <laughs> um, I love to travel. Yeah. And I hate to fly. <laughs> <laughs> so if I could just be like, you know what? It's hot and today's a crappy day. I'm just gonna go, you know, maybe not Italy, but mm. pre 2020. Pre 2020. Like, I'm just gonna go to Greece. Fuck it. I want some, you know. <laughs> I want to just. There's so much stuff that I want to see that if I could just teleport there, it'd be fantastic. So if I could have any power, I think it would be that one. Sure. A fun little power. What if anything is too serious to be joked about? Mm. Huh. Um, I feel like once you get to a certain place in life, you can kind of look back and 
you know, joke about just about anything, you know, that's gone on. Um, but potentially, you know, women's issues like rape, mm. um, brutality, things like that, yeah. abuse, mm-hmm. like those kind of things. I don't think, you know, you hear the, what, what are those, those old, you know, like jokes about if your woman has a black eye or whatever, oh, she didn't, oh, she, yeah. if she has two, she didn't listen, you know, or something yeah. like that. And it's like, Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want one time I did. Well, a couple of women were laughing. The other woman wasn't. I made a joke about roofing, but I was like it's never it's never funny about a man roofing a woman. But it's something funny about a woman roof, roofing a man because like what's going to happen? Like you you gonna wake up and the guy marries you or you're married? Mm. <laughs> That's the worst thing. Mm. I don't know. That, that might yeah, be the worst thing. Yeah, you're feeding into stereotypes that that's what women, all women want. Yeah. yeah. They wouldn't just roofie you for the same reasons a man would roofie a woman. See? Yeah, but <laughs> would it work? Women, women and men are equal. Women will, uh, will rape a guy. I don't know. <laughs> Not well, like, so I, I, see, and what I think is is funny, if there is something funny about a woman roofing a man, is yeah. men are typically really willing. <laughs> I know. So yeah, that's why it's funny. You, like, they would probably be doing it for the silence. It's <laughs> not. <laughs> If a woman well, see, were to roofie a man, it would be to get there's something, fu- there's something, well, <laughs> so, But there's fu- something funny about a woman doing it to a man, but a man does like, oh, shit, that's, that, yeah, it's disgusting, it's horrible, but a woman's like, wait a minute, why did you do that? Well, <laughs> why, but wait, the well, intentions are probably way different. You a really yeah. interesting point there, though, and this is the same kind of double standard, that when a male teacher, and going back to topics that are not, that are too serious to be joked about, when a male teacher takes advantage of an underage female student, obviously we are outraged. And when an attractive female teacher takes advantage of an underage male student, then men joke, you know, oh, God, I wish I had a teacher like that when I was a kid. But the fact is, it's equally serious no matter what. Well, and so I think, to your point, it is equally serious regardless what the, the gender is of either party joking about drugging somebody for for sexual attack well like i was thinking about that yesterday because i was visiting my friend and his daughter grew up i remember so it's weird because his daughter or his stepdaughter is 18 19 now and she she became an attractive woman so i remember seeing her as a kid but then i was thinking of when i was her age a couple older women were hitting on me and i was thinking about like if the vice versa ha- happened i'm like no that'll be weird that'd be very weird if a, if a guy did that if so when when I was her age, someone my age, a woman was like the, my mom's friends, my cousin's friends were hitting on me, and which is like oh, okay, I like that, I like that attention, and one of them actually almost came close to kissing me, which which like I like I, I like I, and I lost my virginity to someone I was older, like maybe ten years older but than me. Were you a legal adult? Yeah, I was a legal okay. adult. Yeah, yeah. So the, all this is legal. But then I started thinking about yeah, I started thinking about it yesterday. It's like. It is a different. It is a different thing if a if it's an older man. Like I see it way differently. Okay, an older man hitting on someone that's young. Or the way I see it is this: that women are still more mature than men. So if a, if let's say if a teach a, a teacher a female teacher has sex with someone's younger, I don't think it's as worse as a man doing it to a woman because the woman. Because the girl matures faster. The girls mature faster, and that's men usually need that mature woman or someone mature to actually get them to grow up. But if a man does it, it's like yeah. I, may, I so, see it as more like taking advantage. Yeah, so it's seen as you know like women are taking advantage of these young. No, nah, but I don't think they. But I don't think they are though. Like I young things. But like, but I just say I was like that's what I was thinking about last time. I think it's just weird if an older man L- is listen, hanging out with a younger woman. If you are of legal age, and I'm not going to say, now when I was in like the fifth grade, I had a ridiculously hot male teacher. But like if you are of legal age and you are hot for a professor, I don't give a, it shouldn't matter. I don't give a shit. If you're male, female, whatever. Like if you're consenting adults, and I think do it to it. And I think with, you know, like you talking about your friend's daughter that you recognize now that she's an adult woman as attractive, now, yeah, maybe that's still a little too much of an age difference, but it's also one of those things that the older both parties get, regardless of gender, the less relevant that age difference becomes. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. No, my, my, well, my thing is like, so th- I'm not saying nothing. I'm not, I'm not trying to say, oh God, hopefully this doesn't sound weird. It's like, I want to do anything with her or specifically anyone 18 because like I want someone older. Yeah. Like probably, old, probably the youngest by me 22 because I feel like at that point there's an age of maturity. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like that's kind of like a good starting point. That's probably the youngest I will go. But like, I was just thinking about yesterday, like what happened to me when I was younger, and well, she's probably going to go do that now, where older men are going to start hanging on her. Oh, and so I was thinking, so I was thinking about that. It's like the differences, like what, what so I encountered. The world, baby. Yeah, mm-hmm. what I encountered and what she's going to encounter, or what she's encountering right now. Oh yeah, absolutely. But yeah, <laughs> we talk, <laughs> we, we're talking about some random such. <laughs> okay, here's a little uh, romantic one. When was the first time you fell in love, and how did it happen? Oh. <laughs> um. Uh, da, da, da. I'm trying to think of like, cause it's it's been it's been <laughs> the first time, like smitten kitten, or like. I'll die if I can't be with you. Like something like you realize, like, like looking back, like okay that. That wasn't just lust or like this puppy love. Like, okay, you actually did. God, there's been a lot that are yeah. puppy love. Um, a whole lot that are puppy love. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know when that would have been. I'm not a super big romantic <laughs> person. I mean, I can say that... Um, I feel like my current relationship is probably the most um, adult relationship that I've been in that has a definition of what people think of when you're in love, Mm -hmm. Um, where we actually talk about issues, we kind of work through problems, and we do a lot of things together, um, which is, it's the most mature relationship that I've been in but it, it took me a lot of years to find it because a lot of everything else was kind of those, um, those knee jerk reactions and the, the, the extreme emotional, you know, kind of like thing, which is probably more toxicity than it is actual love. Um, so like looking when, when I look back being in a, you know, being older and being in a really good relationship, I question whether or not I was actually in love with anybody in, in the past, including the guy that I married, like, Mm -hmm. or just lust or that toxicity level of neediness and, you know, whatnot. So, I mean, it might've been, it might've been a year and a half ago. (laughs) (laughs) Natasha's giving me hard hands. Aw, sweet. Aw, sweet. But I think you're not being fair to yourself to say that maybe the previous long-term relationships weren't love. I it's think that kind it's of possible. Love. Exactly. They, it, it's possible that they met the definition of love for where you were then. Yeah. And now you have matured and you have better assessed your own needs. And so now you've got a more fulfilling love. Yeah. I think there's a, there's a difference between loving someone and being in love with someone. Mm -hmm. I think that there's like, that there's a difference with that. I think that the willingness or the, the willingness that I have to work through, you know, like issues and stuff like that now in the relationship that I'm in now is more of a definition of being, you know, in love with that person versus, you know, just loving them and trying to fix them. (laughs) So, yeah. That's actually a good point. Being with someone not because you want to fix them. Yeah. Yeah. What What was the most terrifying moment in your life? Hmm. You mean aside from flying? <laughs> yeah, besides that, besides that. Um, Which I think is like a natural fear. Aside from flight, every you know, everybody says that, that they think it's a natural fear, and then there's the other half of society that is like, that's just so silly. <laughs> <sighs> um, terrifying moment of my life. I had um, a very crazy ex-boyfriend who chased me out of his apartment at knife point once. That was pretty, pretty terrifying. Ooh. That was not good. Um, 
a lot of people say like car accidents. I've been in a car accident where my car flipped. Oh, wow. And um, it was so like instant, so instantaneous. And then, you know, you, you kind of like come out of it and it, it was, I mean, it was bad, but it wasn't like. Oh, okay. You know, like, because yeah. it's so quick. Mm-hmm. I'm sure if it was a longer, like, you know, your car is skidding and you hear the opera music in your head and your life starts flashing before your eyes, it would be way worse. <laughs> but mine literally just went from going very fast to, you know, and upside down and very quickly within seconds. Um, no, I, I think, <laughs> I think because I, I'm not a big fan of like roller coasters and all that other kind of stuff or flying or whatnot, that those are the most terrifying moments <laughs> <laughs> that I, that I've been in because you just, you just don't know like when it's going to end. I remember we rode a, we rode a ride at Disney and I love dinosaurs and it was like the dinosaur ride at Disney and I didn't, you know, it was just, it was just awful. Like I did not know when it was going to end and I just wanted it to end. It was just absolutely terrible. I oh, was screaming oh, I remember that part. Yeah. I did, remember as a kid, I was screaming too. <laughs> yeah. I was like, and it had dinosaurs. nothing to do with, you know, you're just being like it's jerked around kingdom. from like one thing to the other. And I'm sure there's people that enjoy it, but like, no, it's just, I, I don't like not knowing. Like if I, if I know, Hey, it spins for 30 seconds, and then there's going to be a five-second drop, then I'm okay. But if I don't know any of that stuff's coming, I pretty much just, no, it's the worst thing on, on the planet. It's terrible. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. Like, what is the one thing you would change about yourself? Um, kind of goes back to the being happy with, like, who I am. Um, I think, like, any female... I would probably, you know, I would like to age a little bit differently than what I'm aging. Although I can't really complain. I don't have, it's not bad, but there are <laughs> things that I'm noticing that it's like, mm, it's, no. a, it's okay. We're, I if think this we're all could going just it. not droop <laughs> quite so much, I'd be really happy. Um, and then just, I would love to have a better metabolism so that I could actually eat the cupcakes that I want to eat and not yeah, my gain the weight. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your metabolism and where do I get one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Sucks. laughs> I, I, I've never had one. I think those are the things that I would like to change. Alright. What is your most treasured memory? Hmm. Most treasured memory. Um, I think you're finding that I'm not like a deep reflective person Mm -hmm. I don't I don't like I don't like dwell on you know on things um but I do have I have very fond memories of my uh my grandparents that have passed um one of them is my nana would take me Christmas shopping Mm -hmm. and I literally thought my arm was gonna come out of my socket (laughs) (laughs) she would go for those deals and, you know, there'd be some something that she wanted. And I forget where we were, but we were like, at, at what store it was exactly. But we were in the Regency Mall. And I've always been like, you know, like the chubby kid or whatnot. And she was like, now when this opens, because we're in line waiting for it to open. Now when this opens, we're going to go. And I'm like, okay. And I swear she pulled me through that store so quickly. My feet didn't touch the ground. She just had me by the arm and my feet were like dangling. <laughs> just running through the store with me um but it was like you know that's probably one of my most cherished memories because it it's it's her like it's 100 percent her doing that's just how she was like anybody that knew her in like those years and when when I was really young knew that you know we were going to be up at three o'clock in the morning we were going to be at the mall this was going to go fast and that she was going to trample over anyone that got in her way I think those are those are probably some of my most cherished memories. Are definitely with like, you know, with my grandparents and my nana being one, and um, you know, things that I did. We had a lake place growing up, and uh, my great grandmother and my grandmother and me would all go down to the lake place and, you know, like hang out and do really fun things, learn very inappropriate songs <laughs> <laughs> for, for for a young child. Yes, mosquito on the wee wee. on your Peter. Um, but I was. You know, people would find, would probably, looking at my upbringing, my mom was a single mom. Um, Relationship with my dad was always kind of like, you know, in and out. Um, And 
my grandparents raised me for the most part. My mom had to work. So I spent a lot of time with my grandparents and my um, older generation and uncles. And I feel like growing up that way with having the older generation of my family so influential in Mm -hmm. my life has was really like a really great thing. I can cook, I can sew, I can, you know, I can do all this stuff because they're the ones that, you know, had me through (laughs) through the the formative (laughs) years. And they're like, no, 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 you're going to learn how to do this or no, we're going to do this today. You know? So, I mean, it's, you know, those were great experiences. So we're going to do two more questions before we had to peace out. What's the biggest sacrifice you made in your life? Actually, you know what? Forget that question. We're just going to skip to the last one because I think the last one will cover it. So this one's a two-part question. Okay. And this is the one I ask everyone. It's a really deep question. What is the worst thing you have ever done and what is the best thing you have ever done? Um, The worst thing I've ever done, like, mm-hmm. that I don't... Um, I'm sure there's probably things that are worse than this, but that I view as being like terrible. I lost my temper with my sister once and hit her harder than she should have been hit. Um, and that is like something that haunts me. <laughs> like I, um, my mom, you know, I mean, we, we come from a Latin family, so <laughs> temper's a thing <laughs> and it's a real thing. And it was just, um, you know, I kind of lost my temper and it scared the living daylights out of me that I had lost my temper and kind of had gotten physical. Um, so that's like probably what, to me, it's probably one of the worst things I've done. I'm sure there's others. I'm sure if anybody, you know, has dated me, hears this, they're like, yeah, that wasn't it, girl. <laughs> that's definitely like mine, mine. And then what was, what's the second part? What's the best thing you've ever done in your life? Oh, the best thing I've ever done in my life. Hmm. I really don't know. I really don't know. Um, probably sticking to my guns and uh, despite my my family not understanding and being very afraid of, you know, my retirement um, and what's to come in, in the next, you know, 15, 20 years. Mm-hmm. But probably sticking to my guns and having my business because it's been... Um, it's been a really, really awesome experience. I've been in business for 15 years now, or 15 years in January, it'll yeah. be uh, 15 years. And um, I've gotten to, I've gotten now paid trips. <laughs> I've gotten paid trips to the Keys, to New York, to DC, to, you know, various Disney cruise ships. I've gotten to do things in my lifetime that, I wouldn't have gotten to do if I, you know, worked a nine to five or maybe I would have, but it's taken longer. It would have either taken longer or it would have, you know, it would have been a, you know, a, a completely different experience because when people say, Hey, will you photograph my wedding in Jersey? You don't really think that you'd ever plan a trip to Jersey to mm-hmm. photograph a wedding. And then you're like, yeah, sure. But you get to experience those things. Um, my, my job is it, it, I take everything so personal. Like I posted something the other day, somebody sent me a message saying, Oh, um, you know, our photos and video from the wedding were like absolutely perfect. And I'm like boohooing because I get so emotionally attached to, you know, these people when I do stuff that my business is so personal to me that I don't know who I would be without it at mm-hmm. this point. Like it's been so long. Like it is just most of the friends that I've made all come through photography. Most of the connections that I make are because I'm a photographer. Like it's probably hands down sticking to it and not quitting. And trust me, I've wanted to quit because it is not easy being a photographer, <laughs> especially in an oversaturated market. And we're in a military town where every military wife on the planet is a photographer. <laughs> and they come and go, <laughs> they come in and they come out. Um, but like sticking with it, even when I wanted to quit. And just um, having that determination has probably been some of the best decisions that I've made um, because of the way it fulfills the rest of my life is probably probably the best thing that I've done, I think. All right. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming today. Uh, it was a really fun talk. <laughs> <laughs> Get weird for a little bit. <laughs> Once you yeah. once you uh, tell everyone your website and your business so that people can find you. Um, well, the business that we talked about for the most part today mm-hmm. 
his breaking tradition. It's uh, BeBoldBT.com. So it's it stands for Be Bold Break Tradition. Uh, you know, play on the business name. But yeah, spell out BeBoldBT.com. Mm-hmm. And that's me. The other business is just my name. It's uh, Jessica Lee Photography. There's another Jessica Lee, like in South Carolina, <laughs> that spells it the same way. So I put mine as the Jessica Lee. Oh. <laughs> so, so there's no mistake. <laughs> So you got breaking tradition and the Jessica Lee. All right. All right, guys. Thank you guys for listening. Um, check out other episodes of the podcast, too. And if you're interested in the book I was talking about, there will be a link in the episode title in the episode description. And also, too, I'll put Jessica's contact information and her um, website in the description as well. All right, guys. Have a good week and uh, stay healthy.